Microsoft has just made access to ChatGPT4 absolutely free. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do it. If you're on Mac or your phone, you'll know that in the Mac App Store, you now see Microsoft Copilot. If you just search for Copilot, you want to look for this one with this icon. There are a lot of other things called Copilot made by a lot of brands, and you'll see that it's got a pretty low rating, but it doesn't matter because it still works awesome. So you're just going to install it and click open. And you'll see this is what it looks like when it's opening, the exact same icon. And we don't have to log in or do anything. Here's the most important thing. All you have to do is click this one button to activate ChatGPT4. With that simple button, you can see that it says responses might be a little bit slower. Now, the conversations aren't as long as you can get with ChatGPT4 going back and forth inside of OpenAI. But considering that costs $20 a month, and this is absolutely free. Next, I'm going to show you a demonstration of how we can get the exact same image but with the exact same prompt. I'm just going to use my free Hotmail account, and then I'll be right back. To access image generation from Dolly3, I did have a login with my Hotmail account. It's a free account I had forever. There's nothing paid with my Microsoft account, but let's look at the images we get generated. You quickly zoom in, you can see man riding a horse, man riding a house in front of a waterfall. And our third image, the sideways one, this is the one I think is the most interesting. You click one button to save it to a collection. Let's make it bigger. And let's compare this to the image that I got from my paid version of ChatGPT. I'd actually say they're pretty comparable. I don't know why this man has no shirt on. I did not ask for that. I just said man riding a horse in front of an explosion over a waterfall. So it correctly created the elements that I wanted. We have the horse, the man, the explosion, and the waterfall in the correct positions. With the image here, the waterfall is in the background, but we are technically on top of waterfall. This is more of a cowboy. I do like the eagle and the thing in the background. These are both really exciting. Now, it did miss my request for the aspect ratio. It was supposed to be 1920 by 1080. And that is the one thing missing. If we go back to my prompt, you can see it missed the aspect ratio. These are all squares. But these are definitely created by the same image generator. So it passes that test. For our next test, we're going to ask a more complicated prompt and see exactly what happens. I'm going to use the exact same prompt that I use when I'm creating my podcast show notes. One of the current limitations of Copilot is that it's very hard to start a new conversation. You can see it's not storing past conversations like with ChatGPT. But considering it's free, I don't mind that. I want to switch it into ChatGPT4 mode, so I had to close and reopen Copilot. I've clicked this button here. You'll notice that everything turns from blue to red, so you know which mode you're in. I'm going to copy the exact series of prompts I used to create show notes a couple of days ago for a new episode of my podcast. Look how long and complicated my prompts are. I'm basically saying, here's an example of old show notes. Use these as a baseline. One of the things that's weird is if you click this, it doesn't do anything sometimes. And sometimes it does. So we're going to see the response I got the other day was, I've reviewed the example of a show notes your podcast, Serve the Master. Please let me know what you need next. Thank you for these. You have a great set of show notes. I've reviewed to understand what you want. What's asking, and it's starting to say, please give me a little more information. It's okay. It's given basically the same response or within what I'd consider standard deviation. Now I'm going to copy the transcript of that episode. I'm basically saying to ChatGPT, here's the transcript that led to those last show notes. It knows the raw data and the output so it has the A and B so it can replicate the process. So now I'm pasting that in. And it looks like it doesn't let me give as long of a prompt. That's good to know. It's cutting off somewhere in the middle. Not exactly sure where. I'm looking to see if I can catch it. But we're not going to get the same full length. That's okay. I read I understand it. Finally, I need to get a set of instructions to make sure that it doesn't include the commercials or the intro and outro music in the podcast show notes. In the past, without this prompt, it does give me bad show notes. Right? So this is a critical step in the process. And we're now sending it. This is our third prompt. And let's see if we get the right response. We have to hit enter. Sometimes that arrow works and sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why. I think this is why people are complaining that it's not as good as ChatGPT before, which is true. But this is free. So there's a trade-off. So for people out there who want the free version of ChatGPT before, it is giving the correct answers. That's the most important thing. Now here's the final test. Can it actually make show notes? So this is a prompt where I say, please, Create show notes from this transcript. Follow the model of previous show notes exactly. Do not add or remove any sections. Do not include anything from the announcer or commercials. Here's the transcript. The rest of this is just episode transcript. I don't think it will let me copy all of this in. You can see this is really long. One of the advantages of the paid version of ChatGPT is that it allows you to give a longer prompt length, which doesn't surprise me. This is cutting it off, you can see, quite early. But we'll see what happens. Let's see if we can get the correct show notes. It's responding now. It's very limited here because it doesn't have the entire episode. 
Let's see how close it can get. Good. Correct. The name is even spelled correctly. We're looking to see if it's going to come up with some good quotes from the episode. Are they formatted correctly? We'll put her name in brackets. Yep. Considering it doesn't have the full episode to work from, this is exactly what I wanted. The one thing that's probably going to be missing is the call to action at the end, the links to her website. Yeah, it's not the correct link for her, but that's because we don't say the link until later in the episode. So how would it know it? That's actually what got cut off for me. This test is a win. This is what I consider to be a hard test. Getting it to make, getting Chad to even make good show notes is actually really hard. As you can see, I have three really complicated prompts to warm it up, and then it finally does the task correctly at the end. This is something that took me a lot of work to get to automate this process for me. And what's even more important is that this limitation of the prompt length is something I can solve by cutting the transcript into pieces and saying, here's part one, part two, and part three. Now make the show notes. This is a solvable problem, very easy to work around. But as you can see, the Copilot version of ChatGPT4, it's ACES. It's exactly the same model, except for it's completely free. Let me know in the comments below if you're trying out ChatGPT4. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Please make sure to like, subscribe, show a little bit of love, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked that video, I think you're going to like this one or maybe even this one. Check them out.